All right, Matthew Morris guy here. Want to record a quick video talking about this uh, judge striking down the national moratorium on evictions um, put in place by the CDC and what it means, what you can, what you're likely to see over the next few months. Because you know there's going to be plenty of clickbait, and and I can already see it trending. There's plenty of people talking about, but I want to give my honest feedback on what I really think is going to happen. Um, or what is not going to happen, right? So um, I'm going to play this clip. It, you know, probably the first minute and a half, just to add some color to it. Then I'll add my comments on what I think um, will happen in the next few months, how it will affect you if you're a renter, whether or not you should um, be cheering as a landlord or not affected, whether or not you should be cheering as a tenant or relatively unaffected, unaffected um, how it's going to affect different states as well, because it's going to be different. Even though this is a nationwide um, ban on evictions, um, it's not going to apply to states that have their own specific eviction ban. All right, let's take a listen. Well, we got some breaking news. A federal judge has overturned a national ban on evictions that was put in place amid the devastation of the pandemic. The order could potentially put millions of Americans at risk of losing their place to live. So let's get the latest. Our justice correspondent, Pete Williams, is with us. So, Pete, um, this was a federal judge that put this down. What, what does this mean? Is there going to be a stay? Walk us through the, uh, uh, the order. Sure. So remember the history here. Uh, after Congress passes the CARES Act, there is a moratorium on foreclosures that are federally supported. Then uh, there's a second action by the CDC extending it to all uh, rental properties, uh, the Congress allowed that to renew, then the Congress authority uh, expired. And so the CDC authority that's in effect now is based solely on the CDC's own interpretation of its legal authority under public health law. And the judge said today, sorry, you don't have the authority to do this. Uh, the CDC had said this was necessary to help prevent the spread of disease, to let governors better enforce stay at home orders to keep people in their homes instead of gathering with others. But the judge said today that the law does not give the CDC the authority to do this on its own. Now, the, the government had said, well, if you're going to rule against us, limit your ruling only to the people who sued us here, which is a group of realtors and realtor associations. But the judge said, sorry, I'm, I'm bound by precedent that said when, when I rule that something like this is invalid, it has to be nationwide. So that's the background. Who does it affect? It affects anyone that does not live in the 18 states that have their own state moratoriums. This is simply about the federal authority, it has nothing to do with the state authority, which is an entirely different question. And there are 18 states plus the District of Columbia, and they include some big states, California, Illinois, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't affect people in those states. Now, you asked about a stay. Uh, I just talked to somebody at Justice. They say that they're considering their next steps I don't have to play through the whole thing, but but a couple of things I want to touch on. Like I like I said earlier, if you're in California like I am, or if you're in one of those 18 states, I'll try to put a link down below on what those 18 states are, you are unaffected because your state eviction ban is going to override this anyhow. And so you in California can evict um ex, you know, ex certain circumstances, right? So so basically this isn't changing anything. So you shouldn't be throwing a party tonight if you're a landlord, um, nor should you as a tenant think that you're in any more danger because of this. But more importantly, and I think the, the, the most important point for me on this whole thing is that um, I'm not sure if it was this video or something else I was watching on it, but this thing was set to expire the end of June. And we know from different actions taken that they're trying to do everything to help folks out until the economy has recovered, until people are back to work, until they're in a better position financially as a whole, right? And so if if people are back to work and the economy's reopened and things are doing well, they wouldn't extend this, which is you know set to expire the end of June. We're literally seven weeks away from this thing expiring anyway. What's gonna happen now is that that's, there's going to be an appeal and there's no way on God's green earth if anybody knows how slow courts work, like that they're going to come to any resolution in the next seven weeks anyhow. And so while it's in appeal, this this can't be overturned. This can't be struck down. This can't um, go into effect. And so literally nothing is going to change. This judge's ruling and all the buzz around it today, Cinco de Mayo, 
and tomorrow, Seis de Mayo, and the day after the Siete de Mayo. Over the next 48 hours, I'm sure there's plenty of buzz around it, and literally nothing is going to change. Not just for the 18 states that have their own state, uh, you know, eviction ban on the books already, and then this is going to affect, but really nationwide, nothing's going to change. And um, who knows what will come of it if this gets overturned, if it doesn't, if the end of June deadline gets pushed out farther or it doesn't, only time will tell. But what I will say is that if, and, and this is just me speaking as a small landlord, right? I'm not a huge company. My wife and I own a few properties. Um, as a landlord, what we should be doing is working and doing all we can to work with tenants. I can tell you tenants that are struggling and that are working with their landlords, I hope are mostly getting the same response that my tenants are getting. Let's work together. Let's figure something out. Um, there's some tenants and you'll hear plenty of talk on this that are taking advantage of the system. They're still making the same that they were last year and the year before. They're just choosing not to pay because they've, they feel like they've got a free pass. But then on the tenant side, what what you want to do is if you truly need assistance, if you're truly out of work, can't find work, whatever the case may be, there's $50 billion in rental assistance. I was watching something about the programs in Texas. I know, um, you know, that's that 50 billion nationally is is being divided up into different states and then state agencies are doling that out. I've got tenants who are behind and that we're applying on their behalf to make good on past due rent with those 50 billion in funds California's got, who knows, 500 million, a billion of it, maybe a couple billion actually, as big as California is, and through state agencies is able to disperse those funds to help tenants um, get good on back rent and maybe even pay um, current and, and future rent until they can get back on their feet. So. Um, as much as this news will get all kinds of attention, as much as this news is going to be great for headlines and people are going to, you know, be an uproar over it, it's really no news at all, in my humble opinion. So we'll see how this shakes out. More than likely, what you're going to hear next is the Department of Justice has already said we're going to appeal this and they're going to drag it on and nothing, next to nothing is going to change. The one thing that I always thought was interesting, right, is that um, the CDC didn't say this was a, a financial uh, issue and they were helping out renters because of a financial issue. It was like, it's a public health crisis. So we don't want mobility and people moving around. We want to be able to, um, you know, enforce stay at home orders because we don't want to spread COVID. Um, and as states open up all over the country is the cd still cdc still leaning on that that they're trying to keep people at home and trying to keep the spread of 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 covid from happening or or are we saying the tenants are struggling and that's why we're trying to protect them because that's the bigger issue in my humble opinion but anyway i don't want to give too much of my opinion on politics and what's being done could be done and should be done and all that stuff i'll leave that to uh the politicians um, so anyhow, hopefully this was helpful. Um, as always, I appreciate you watching like comment, subscribe, share, do your thing. Appreciate you. Bye.